Here I explain uh, our, our um, experience in the field of tissue engineering. As plastic surgeon, I mainly spend uh, my research to study possible surgical application of tissue engineering, mainly skin and vascular tissue engineering. And uh, here I speak about uh, microvascular tissue engineering and in particular the possibility to create a, a, a microvascular prosthesis. Then our aim uh, is, uh, the, uh, is the possibility to regenerate a small diameter artery and vein uh, using uh, the main principles of uh, regenerative medicines. Then uh, we need a, a prosthesis uh, that is able to induce the regeneration of uh, the intimal layer uh, to avoid acute thrombosis in the new vessel then the media layer uh, to give uh, to the possibility to the new vessel uh, to respond to mechanical stimuli and finally the adventitial layer to give long-term mechanical strength to our uh, new artery, to the regenerated artery. Uh, the final aim is uh, will, uh, be, uh, to regenerate uh, a microvascular pedicle, then both an artery and a vein. And this is in particular for uh, plastic surgery application and microsurgery. I think uh, uh, you know that uh, if you, you want uh, to create a new artery, you need uh, uh, endothelial cells that uh, are the, and, and may be represented in the intimal layer. Then you need elastin uh, to reconstruct the media. And uh, finally, uh, you need uh, uh, the fibrous tissues to, to regenerate the tunica externa. And the same is for the vein. But why we need uh, microvascular prosthesis? Uh, it is important uh, when uh, you study tissue engineering and uh, regenerative medicine to keep in mind that, is, uh, that uh, you need some, uh, some new con construct that you can use in uh, clinical practice. And the need of vascular substitutes is represented by the, a, a large number of bypass operations, both in the coron coronary district and then uh, there are many other surgical needs, like uh, if you want to replace a vessel defect in the peripheral circulation, uh, to, to make a bypass in the lower in the, in the leg, and uh, many other microsurgical application. Uh, coronary and peripheral vascular bypass graft are uh, approximately uh, performed in uh, 6,000 patients. And so uh, there is a, a very important economical and social impact of this type of uh, prosthesis. Other field, and this is uh, my field of application, is microsurgery, in particular when uh, you, you must reconstruct uh, uh, an and, and uh, after an uh, important or severe trauma of the upper arm. Also, I go <laughs> <laughs> quickly. <laughs> uh, and so that uh, uh, this type of surgery is uh, very fre frequent and, uh, the, and you have a, a big uh, re request. Uh, actually, a replacement of disease arteries uh, is generally with autologous vein or artery. Uh, but uh, vein graft uh, is uh, very thin and, uh, are, uh, and uh, is uh, not always available in all patients. Uh, you can also use internal mammary arteries, uh, but you can use it only for in the coronary circulation. You, can use the, you can't uh, use uh, internal mammary to reconstruct uh, uh, an ulnar or radial artery in the uh, arm. Therefore, many patients uh, uh, who are in need of bypass surgery do not possess adequate uh, prosthesis to perform surgery. Sorry. Then uh, uh, researchers uh, 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 try to develop uh, synthetic prosthesis. Uh, the, the, the advantage uh, of providing uh, uh, customized vascular, vascular substitutes. But uh, synthetic prosthesis 
uh, don't uh, you can't uh, use uh, uh, synthetic prosthesis in a, to replace a small diameter artery or vein. Why? Uh, actually, uh, synthetic prosthesis are used to replace a bigger uh, vessel like the abdominal aorta or the or the thoracic aorta. And uh, while outstanding results have been uh, achieved with a large vessel, uh, they were poorly suited for small caliber vessels graft. Uh, because uh, synthetic prosthesis is uh, unable uh, to, to allow the endothelial layer regeneration inside the lumen of the prosthesis and the regeneration of the elastic and small, as, and small uh, muscle vascular cells. And uh, it is very important when uh, you, uh, you want to study the possibility to regenerate a vessel, uh, to, to project, to, to develop a prosthesis that is able to, uh, to allow the endothelial layer regeneration and the regeneration of both of collagen and elastin, if uh, you want a stable uh, result. And uh, 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 normally, synthetic prosthesis uh, don't allow regeneration of the endothelial layer. And this, this is the uh, main reasons because uh, you can use it in a small vessel uh, uh, replacement. Uh, why is important endothelial layer? Because uh, it prevents uh, uh, acute thrombosis. And, uh, because, uh, and uh, avoiding the reaction between platelets and the surface of the biomaterial. The other main components is uh, elastin that give uh, uh, the fundamental requirements of mechanical strength to your prosthesis or your artery or vein. Elastin also uh, induce uh, the proliferation and differentiation of smooth muscle vascular cells. Then, uh, moreover, a successful artery prosthesis uh, must be infection resistant, biocompatible and biostable, and leak proof and thrombo resistant. Other requirements is uh, are appropriate uh, mechanical properties, appropriate uh, uh, physiological ability to constrict or relax in response to neural or chemical stimuli, and uh, must be manufactured uh, in a re relatively short space of time and uh, cheaply. So what can we do? Uh, uh, researchers study the possibility to, uh, to, to seed endothelial cells uh, in the lumen of synthetic prosthesis, but without success. Or you can develop a, a new uh, vas vessel in vitro. Um, you can uh, follow tissue engineering uh, uh, procedures and then uh, you can uh, reconstruct onto collagen biomaterial, for example, a, a new vascular uh, uh, conduit, seeding endothe autologous endothelial and uh, smooth muscle cells. But uh, this is a time consuming uh, procedure, and then uh, you, can, uh, you can use it in emergency or uh, uh, in other clinical applications. And it's uh, very expensive. This is an example of a uh, tissue engineering application uh, that allows the, the in vitro regeneration of a small artery segment. Then uh, you can study new types of prosthetic material, uh, in particular resorbable materials like polyurethane and polylactic and polyglycolic acid. Uh, this research uh, led to a biomaterial evolution from a 
inert biomaterials to active biomaterials if you use biomaterial uh, and you add cells or growth factor in vitro. And finally, uh, to intelligent biomaterials that are able to, to persuade the body to heal itself, to regenerate directly in vivo the new artery or new vein. These type of biomaterials are, uh, um, allow the, the development of regenerative medicine, that is the induced organ regeneration of uh, a physiological or nearly physiological organ at the same original anatomical site. Regenerative medicine is a, a next step of uh, tissue engineering and is the more actual objective of tissue engineering. Uh, to, to, allow, to, to follow regenerative medicine uh, principles, uh, you need a, a scaffold, a bioresorbable scaffold, able to induce the sequential regeneration of the vascular components. That final, uh, uh, and the, the biomaterial is finally completely reabsorbed and live in situ the new vessel tract, the new artery or new vein. Up to now, uh, uh, in vivo long-term uh, long patency and good mechanical wall mechanical strength have been extremely difficult to achieve in the field of microvascular tissue engineering. Uh, we intend microvascular tissue engineering when we speak about vessel with a two millimeter diameter. We start our experience uh, using a cellular artery graft, we, but uh, we haven't uh, got good uh, results. We have uh, an high uh, 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 incidence of aneurysmatic dilatation. Then uh, we shift our attention to a bioresorbable biomaterials, that is hyaluronic acid. We have uh, extremely confidence with these biomaterials because uh, uh, it is uh, FDA approved and uh, it is mainly used for skin tissue engineering. It is a natural uh, co main component of the extracellular matrix and uh, you can uh, chemically uh, and, uh, uh, you can modify the biomaterial in several forms from fibers to microspheres to three-dimensional uh, scaffold. Then, first, the first steps of our research uh, was to, to study uh, the possibility to induce the regeneration of small artery defect. Uh, we, make a, we made a preliminary study in rats. Uh, we perform a, a, I take this, a small vessel. A small vessel. This is the abdominal aorta of the rat. Uh, okay, this is the defect, a five millimeter defect. This is the hyaluronic acid. The hyaluronic acid uh, uh, was implanted to repair the small defect. This is uh, immediately after surgery. One week after patch repair, you can observe the, a, a good integration uh, from a macroscopical point of view of the biomaterials with the artery wall. This is the patch. And the histological samples show the, that the biomaterial is, uh, is present after one week. And uh, you can observe a small regeneration, both uh, in the uh, luminal surface of the artery and external uh, surface. This is the details of the new regenerated uh, tissues. After two months, the myomaterials is uh, integrated with the, new, with, with the artery. The blood flow is uh, conserved. This is the macroscopical samples. The biomaterials is present, is not reabsorbed, but the new artery wall is uh, perfectly regenerated. This is the endothelial layer, 
and this is the biomaterial. And you can observe also the presence of the elastic layer. This is a Weigerd uh, uh, solution that allows to, uh, to see the elastic layer and the biomaterial. Uh, components of the extracellular matrix, type 6 collagen. Then uh, the most important novel findings is that we observe a progressive uh, linear regeneration of the elastic layer that allow, uh, uh, four months after implantation, the complete reconstruction of the artery wall and the biomaterial is completely reabsorbed. Four months after implantation, the macroscopic aspect of the surgical repair of the vascular defect. This is the surgical stitches. And here I summarize the results uh, two, four, eight, and, six, and uh, 16 weeks after surgery. And uh, you can see the progressive uh, regeneration of the elastic layer and the progressive uh, reabsorption of the biomaterial. The, uh, after two weeks, the endothelial layers <coughs> is present. Uh, the vascular motor muscle cell layer is not, uh, uh, isn't regenerated. You can see vascular motor muscle cells after four weeks. And also after eight and 16 weeks. In conclusion, the, the, in these three steps, we were able to demonstrate that uh, hyaluronic acid-based vascular patches offers an ideal in vivo model to study vascular regeneration event, uh, events. They allow first the regeneration of the endothelial cells, then the smooth muscle vascular cells, and finally, uh, we observe after four months the complete reabsorption of the biomaterial and, uh, and, uh, and an ideal vascular wall remodeling. This step uh, suggests us to study the possibility to substitute an artery tract. This is also an, uh, a, an rat model. This is the abdominal aorta, the prosthesis that is transparent, the surgical implantation of the prosthesis. This is the vascular clamp that allow you to perform surgery without bleeding. This is the prosthesis implanted at the abdominal aorta level. And, and uh, you can see after the removal of the vascular clamps that the blood flow resumes throughout the prosthesis. And, uh, and the, the biomaterials allow you to use uh, thin zero stitches that are very thin uh, stitches. This is one month after surgery. The blood flow uh, is uh, um, preserved. And, uh, but the, the most important finding is that you, can, uh, uh, you don't observe uh, um, fibrotic adherence between the new artery and the surrounding tissues and the consistence of the new vessel. Five days after surgery, microsco the macroscopic aspect of the prosthesis and uh, uh, you can see that the process is transparent and allow you to, to see as, uh, the start of, uh, the, of the new tissue regeneration inside the prosthesis. The histological samples uh, allow us to, to see that uh, there, are, the, there is a small uh, regeneration of new tissues both inside and outside of the prosthesis. After five days, uh, we don't observe smooth uh, muscle vascular cells and elastic fibers inside the prosthesis. But we can see uh, an endothelial layer, and we use uh, as a marker a uh, von Willebrand fracture, vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, and the CD34. And we hypothesize, but is, we, we don't very, uh, demonstrate this, that the, the possibility to the co-participation of circulating endothelial progenitor cell to the regenerative event, to the early regenerative events, because this is, uh, these two markets are suggestive of uh, the presence of endothelial cells. 
After 15 days, uh, the endothelial layer is complete. And also the media layer. And we observe at the anastomotic size uh, an initial regeneration of the elastic layer. This is the new artery inside the prosthesis. This is the original artery. After one month, the biomaterial is still present. This is the tra transversal section and the longitudinal section of the sample. And the new tissues run from the two anastomotic sides, both inside and outside the prosthesis. The biomaterial is integral and neovascular tissues run from distal to proximal anastomosis either on the luminal and the external surface. The endothelial layer, the mass layer are complete. And there are also present the main components of the extracellular matrix. We study collagen 1 and collagen After two months, uh, it is important that we can see the, parcel, the par partial degradation of the biomaterials. Uh, white areas uh, like uh, this represent biomaterial remnant, uh, remnants fallen out from the histological uh, slides. This is some uh, lumens on Vasa Vasorum, and this is the new artery. endothelial layer, uh, muscle layer, and the elastic layer are complete. After six months, uh, the most important uh, result is the complete uh, reabsorption of the biomaterial. The biomaterial is absent as substitutes by a neodventitial tissue that is completely fused with the media. endothelial layer, muscle layer, and elastic layer, demonstrated by, 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 by Gert Stein. And it is very important because with a normal synthetic prothesis, uh, you can obtain uh, elastic layer regeneration. Then with the, using this prosthesis in a rat model, we, we were able uh, to reproduce uh, the morphogenetic events needed for uh, artery regenerations. F first, the endothelial progenitor and uh, mature endothelial cells, then uh, the activation of small uh, muscle cells, and finally, the complete regeneration of the small vessel. It is important to to underline that in the absence of the extracellular matrix elastin accumulations, a smooth muscle uh, pr proliferation led to arterial stenosis. It is well demonstrated the interaction between elastin as and uh, muscle vascular cell proliferation and differentiation. The first steps, uh, we test the ability of the prosthesis to allow the regeneration of a uh, vena uh, we use a, a segment of vena cava in a rat. This is the prosthesis at the time of implantation, after the removal of vascular clamps, one month after surgery, and two months after surgery. The surgical procedure, again. The macroscopic aspect of the prosthesis, after one month, two months, and uh, Three months. The prosthesis is, after three months, in nearly completely reabsorbed. From histological point of view, the results uh, are very similar to, uh, to the result obtained in the artery model. This is the, uh, uh, the, new, uh, the new vein inside the biomaterials, the endothelial cell layer, and the muscle layer, one month after surgery. 
after two months, uh, here we can see the macro and microscopic aspect of the anastomotic site, two months after surgery. This is the vena cava, and here the prosthesis. This is the surgical stitches and the new uh, tissues that uh, grow uh, inside the biomaterial and the elastic layer. After three months, uh, the biomaterial is nearly completely reabsorbed, the new vein, a, a detail of the luminal aspect of the new vein inside the prosthesis, the endothelial and the muscle layer regeneration. This is three months after surgery. Again, the complete re we obtain the complete regeneration, both of smooth muscle vascular cell layer and endothelial cell layer. For step, uh, we use the, the prosthesis in a more representative animal model, and we test uh, the ability to substitute a, a, carot a common carotary artery tract. This is the surgical implantation of the prosthesis. We use five centimeter length, four millimeter diameter prosthesis. And we need to use uh, uh, fibrin glue to seal, the, to seal the anastomosis because uh, in the pig you have uh, um, an imported blood flow and uh, sometimes you can observe some uh, oozing of, flu of, of blood from the prosthesis. I summarize the surgical implantation of the prosthesis. Uh, immediately before of the removal of vascular clamps, immediately after the removal of vascular clamps. This is fibrin glue. <coughs> uh, we perform also functional study using a codoppler. This is the wall of the prosthesis 15 days after surgery. This is the blood flow one month after surgery, and four months after surgery, uh, uh, you have some uh, uh, problem to identify the vascular wall, the, the prosthesis, because it's nearly completely reabsorbed, but uh, you can see that the blood, for, the blood flow is uh, well represented inside the new artery. And uh, again, uh, echo-doppler uh, results that show that the, the blood flow is, con is uh, preserved inside the prosthesis four months after surgery. Uh, this is a transversal section of the prosthesis. In the pig, we have uh, a high rate of complication, but despite uh, the par partial occlusion of the lumen, we observe that they complete uh, vascular wall regeneration. Then uh, probably is a um, late complication this is the elastic uh, layer, and this is the control. This is a, a good, good result after four months with the complete vascular wall regeneration. Probably uh, this complication is mainly due to the a vascular mismatch between the prosthesis and the native artery, because the prosthesis uh, is uh, too rigid actually and uh, must be improved uh, from a mechanical point of view. Uh, we, ma uh, we should do in the future many mechanical studies before to, to, to use these prosthesis in, uh, uh, in a human model. In conclusion, uh, we have clearly demonstrated the possibility of uh, a completely uh, bio biodegradable in vivo vascular regeneration guide that was able to orchestrate the vascular regeneration events uh, required for very small artery and very reconstruction before the intimal, and as I say before, then the media, and finally the adventitial layer. Uh, the main properties of this uh, prosthesis uh, are that is a small diameter prosthesis that is ready to use, then uh, you can use it in uh, emergency, you, can, you could use it uh, in uh, emergency situations. 
And uh, this prosthesis uh, does not require cell or biochemical preconditioning. The prosthesis acts simply as a biological guide for vascular uh, mesenchymal cells. These cells uh, are able to run along the wall without infiltrating the, the biomaterial. And the most important, uh, we observe the complete prosthesis degradation after four or five months. And we hope uh, now we are trying to, both regenerate, to regenerate both uh, in the same team, both the vena cava and the abdominal aorta, again in a rat model and in a rabbit model. To have the possibility to use it in, in plastic surgery application, uh, in particular to use to elongate vascular pedicle or to treat main trauma. Okay. Future research, I hope to, to have the possibility to study, to, to study better the interaction between endothelial cells and the biomaterial surface, the interaction between endothelial cells, and finally the interaction between endothelial cells and the other cellular component of the vascular wall. And uh, we are developing new possibility of surgical application. We have developed uh, a small ring of hyaluronic acid, and uh, we put it inside the, the artery to allow a more uh, easy and, uh, and less time consuming anast surgical anastomosis of the artery. But this is only at, uh, at the studies is only at the beginning, and we are observing some uh, good results but we have to study better. Endothelial layer. This is our main uh, uh, publication regarding this uh, field of investigation. And I thank you, my lab in Padova. Thank you very much.